Now, when you get to the win side of the flight computer, the first thing that you always want to put on the win side is, guess what? The wind. And here's how you put the wind on the wind side of the flight computer. First of all, what you want to do is rotate this plastic disc in the inside until the wind direction is underneath the true index up at the top. The wind direction was given to us as 300 degrees. So rotate this clear plastic disc in the center until 300 degrees is underneath the index up at the top. That's the wind direction. Now what we want to do is we want to mark the wind velocity. Now the wind speed was given to us as 14 knots. It would be nice if there were a zero wind strength arc on here to start with, but we don't have a zero. It doesn't go down that far. What we do have is 100, so we'll use the 100 arc as a handy starting reference point. It's just simply a reference point. Slide the inner slide up or down until the grommet in the center is sitting over the arc for the 100 as our handy starting reference point. What we want to do then is mark up from the center 14 knots. So here's 100, here's 110, here's 120, this would be 115, and here's 114. And put an X right there, and that will represent the wind dot. So we've marked up from the center grommet 14 units from 100 to 114 to mark our wind. Now once you've got that done, draw an arrow. Draw an arrow from the X you put on there to the center grommet. And that's going to represent the wind direction and the speed. And it will show us visually what's going to happen to us as far as the wind effect is concerned. Okay, we've got the wind marked on the wind side of our computer. The next thing we want to do is we want to put the true course underneath the index up at the top. We want to rotate the clear plastic disc in the center until our true course, which we just measured off the chart as being 344 degrees, is underneath this true index up at the top. So rotate that inner disc, that clear plastic disc, and put 344 underneath that index up at the top. Once we've got our true course set underneath the true index there, we're going to move the slide again. Move the slide up or down until the X that represents the wind is sitting on the arc for our true airspeed. Now our true airspeed was given to us in the question as 90 knots. So move that inner slide up or down until the X that we put on there is sitting on the arc for 90 knots. Now once you've done that, take a look at it. This is the same picture that we were looking at on the sectional chart. Our aircraft is flying straight up the wind side of the computer, straight up that center line. This arrow represents what the wind is doing to us. It's somewhat of a headwind, so our ground speed will be slower than our true airspeed. And it's also from the left. So we're going to have to cram to the left. We're going to have to have a wind correction angle to the left in order to compensate for that wind. The first thing we want to do now is we want to take a look at how many degrees of wind correction angle we'll need. So let's count the nearly vertical lines over to the left until we get there. Each of these nearly vertical lines represents one degree of wind correction angle. So let's count those lines. Here's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and we're one past the five, and it says five right there, so we could have just started with that. It's one past the five, so we have six degrees of wind correction angle, and that wind correction angle to the left, 
because it's on the left side of our course line. Our course line, remember, is straight up and down on the slide in our flight computer. Now let's store that away for a minute, our six degrees left wind correction angle, and let's take a look at our ground speed. The little grommet in the center of the clear plastic disc will always end up over the ground speed when you work a wind problem. So take a look at that grommet in the center of the clear plastic disc and look at the wind strength arc that it's sitting on. And what it's sitting right on top of is the 80. So we have a ground speed here of 80 knots. And we'll store that 80 knots away also because we're going to use it again in a minute. Take a look now at the boxes down at the bottom of the flight computer. And let's start working out our problem to end up with our magnetic heading. Now the boxes start on the left side with the true course. We measured the true course with our plotter on the sectional chart. And how many degrees was that? 344. So pick up your pencil and put 344 in that first box. Once you've got it in there, the next box says we want to apply our wind correction angle. We'll subtract a left wind correction angle, we'll add a right wind correction angle. And our wind correction angle was six degrees which direction? To the left. So are we going to add it or subtract it? We're going to subtract it. So enter a minus six degrees in the box for the wind correction angle. Because it's a wind correction angle to the left, we're subtracting it. 344 minus 6 degrees left wind correction angle will give us our true heading, and our true heading is 338 degrees. That true heading is the direction we would have to have the nose of the airplane pointed to compensate for the wind. But we've not yet compensated for magnetic variation. That's what this next box does. And we're going to subtract it if it's easterly, add it if it's westerly, east is least, and west is best. But first, we have to figure out how much it is. And for that, we need to take a look back on the chart. What we're looking for on the chart is a magenta-dashed isogonic line that crosses, or is close to, our course. And you can see that we find one right here going through the middle of the chart. And if we follow that dash line up to the right, a little bit to the southeast of the lake, we find the numbers, our magnetic variation here, and it's 15 degrees 30 minutes east. And I'd round that off to 16 degrees of easterly variation. It's easterly variation, so will we add it or subtract it? We're going to subtract it. Remember, east is least. Now going back to the bottom of the flight computer, let's enter a minus 16 degrees in the box for variation. 338 degrees minus an easterly variation of 16, and let's enter our magnetic heading in the next box, and that magnetic heading is 322 degrees. Now, in this particular question, the FAA did not ask you to apply compass deviation in order to get a compass heading. They have you stop right there with a magnetic heading of 322 degrees. And that's part of the answer that we're looking for. Now let's recap how we got there in addition to these boxes across the bottom. What you do is you start with your true course as measured on the chart, 344 degrees. Add or subtract, in this case subtract because it's left, the wind correction angle, which was six degrees. So a minus six degrees gives us a true heading of 338 degrees. Find the magnetic variation on the sectional chart. It was 16 degrees east in this case because it's east. Remember, east is least. We're going to subtract it, and that gives us a magnetic heading of 322 degrees. In order to figure out what our estimated time en route is going to be, we need to figure out how many miles it is 
between those airports. So let's take a look at the chart again, and this time we want to measure the distance between our two airports, from St. Mary's Airport up to Priest River. So put a corner of your piece of paper in the center of St. Mary's Airport with a paper lined up along your course line, and then go up to Priest River Airport and put a pencil mark on your paper at the center of Priest River Airport. Now move your paper to the mileage scale to measure the distance. Find the nautical mile scale and put the pencil mark for Priest River Airport on the tick mark for 50 nautical miles. Then look to the left of the zero point and count the small tick marks. It looks like the corner of the paper is just past the third tick mark. So 50 plus 3 gives us 53 nautical miles between those two airports. To recap the information we have so far, we know that our ground speed is 80 knots and we've just measured our distance as being 53 nautical miles. And what we need to do now is to figure out what our estimated time en route is going to be based on that information. So go to the other side of your flight computer, the circular slide rule side, and let's figure out how much time it's going to take us for that trip. Now when you get to this side of the flight computer, what's the first thing you put on there? How fast? And how fast did we figure out we're going? We're doing 80 knots, 80 nautical miles in 60 minutes. So look around the outside scale of the flight computer because distance is always on the outside scale until you find the 80 for 80 nautical miles. Then rotate the inner dial until 60 minutes is underneath the 80 nautical miles. We're setting up our ratio that we can do 80 nautical miles every 60 minutes. But we aren't going to fly for 80 nautical miles. We're only going to fly for 53 nautical miles. So leaving the flight computer set like that, simply look around the outside scale of the flight computer, because distance is always on the outside, until you find 53 nautical miles. And here's 50, here's 55, this is 51, 52, 53 nautical miles, and the next scale in will tell you how many minutes it's going to take to fly that 53 nautical miles, and it's going to take 40 minutes to do 53 nautical miles. But wait, there's more. Because how much time did the FAA say you needed to add because of the climb? You need to add three minutes because of the climb. So here's what your total estimated time en route is going to look like. You figured that your time en route, based on just the wind part of the problem, would be 40 minutes. But the FAA tells you to add three minutes for the climb out. Don't forget to add the three minutes. So when you add that three minutes, your total estimated time en route will be 43 minutes. The two things the FAA was looking for in this particular question, your magnetic heading was 322 degrees and your total estimated time en route is 43 minutes. See, nothing to it.